Thanks for dropping in. It's the final video of the year, and we're going out with a bang. This is the print in place twisty puzzle box. It's my first puzzle box design that's ready to be solved the moment it pops off the printer bed. That means no supports, no cleanup, no hardware, no assembly at all. You can print this puzzle for yourself and have no idea how to open it. Normally I throw in a spoiler warning here. I tell you to skip the video if you wanted to solve the puzzle for yourself. Well, we're not going to do that this time, because I'm not going to reveal how the puzzle works. Instead, I'll tell you the puzzle's goal, some customization options, and a few printing tips to make sure your copy is solvable. Let's start with the goal. On the bottom of the puzzle, you'll find several indicator dots, which are grouped into pairs. The challenge is to fully open the puzzle and then close it back up so that those dots return to their original alignment. Closing it most of the way doesn't cut it. To achieve this goal, do not use excessive force. This is a puzzle, not a feat of strength. As for the challenge, I consider this to be a medium difficulty puzzle, pretty close to the brick block puzzle box I made last year. So how about those customization options? This puzzle design comes in four different styles. The first style is a simple cylinder, the bare necessities the puzzle needs to function, and it comes in three different heights. Choose the small cylinder if you want a fast print. Choose the medium or large cylinders if you actually want to use the puzzle for storage. The next style is a Christmas tree. It flips the puzzle on its head and turns the central key into a trunk. Like the Dracula's Tower puzzle box I designed for Halloween, this option can camouflage itself as a simple holiday decoration. Sticking with the holiday theme, the next style is a dreidel. I can't guarantee it's sufficiently balanced for a fair game, but it does spin. Since I'm terrible at painting 3D prints, this model comes with optional letters that you can print separately and glue in. The last style makes use of the Doctor Who TARDIS model I made last year, from twist lock box to bobblehead to puzzle. This design has gotten a lot of use. And as is fitting for a TARDIS, this option is larger on the inside than all of the other styles. No matter which option you choose, the puzzle will be the same. In fact, the inner core of the puzzle is interchangeable. You could print the smallest cylinder design, solve it, remove the core, and pop it into a TARDIS casing. There's one more customization option to consider. I'm sharing a template file that represents the inner chamber of the puzzle. I'm not showing the model here, since it would give away some of the puzzle solution. But by using this part, you can transform any large model with a flat bottom into a print-in-place puzzle. I'll go into that in more detail in a future video. But how do you print this thing? After all, even simple print-in-place models are tricky to reproduce reliably. While I can't promise every 3D printer will be up to the task, I've designed the puzzle to be as forgiving as possible. It's not a torture test by any means. To achieve this, I've increased the default clearances I use for my mechanical designs. It's now nearly tripled to 0.5 millimeters. Also, any functionally important overhangs are limited to 45 degree angles. That should be possible for any modern printer with decent cooling. To maximize your chances for a successful print, make sure your bed adhesion is in top form. Give the print bed a good clean, and check that your first layers have the right amount of squish. Not all 3D printing filaments are equal, but I got good results with both cheap and pricey PLAs. That includes filaments from Inland, Duramic 3D, Prusa, Protopasta, and filamentum. Chances are, if you have a filament that's consistent, doesn't string, has good layer adhesion, and doesn't create large blobs, it'll work for this model. You might have noticed that I have fuzzy skin turned on for some of these prints. If you want to do that too, be absolutely sure you're only applying it to the outer walls of the outer shell. To achieve this, you'll need to split the object into parts within your slicing software. Select just the outer shell, and apply the fuzzy skin settings only to that element. My next recommendation 
is to keep your print speed relatively slow. This isn't a good model to speedrun, unless if you want to spend solving time wondering whether you're stuck or the puzzle is. And that brings us to the last point. This is a puzzle box. Its mechanisms are intentionally hidden. How do you even know if the print you made is solvable? For that, I'm going to get right up to the spoiler line. When you take the puzzle off the print bed, you should be able to spot the following. First, the puzzle will rattle easily. Various elements carved into the bottom of the puzzle will be free to wiggle. The largest disc will rotate with a little coaxing. If that doesn't move easily, you may just need to hold the puzzle upright while rotating the disc from below. The puzzle key, which is printed separately, will slide at least part of the way into this hole. And when the puzzle key is twisted, it'll rotate easily. If all these are true, the rest should be perfectly fine and you're ready to start solving. Next year, I'll be back with an additional update to this puzzle design. I'll also have a step-by-step -step guide to customize your own version using Prusa Slicer in its negative volume feature. But until then, happy holidays, happy new year, and thanks for stopping by.